to the only King of glory, Him who sits upon the throne. All our praise and adoration, it belongs to Him alone. For He is worthy, He is worthy, He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy, He is worthy, He is worthy. To the Alpha and Omega, to the Ancient of Days, all consistent in your nature, God the same from age to age, He is worthy, He is worthy, He is worthy. Is worthy, is worthy, he is worthy to be praised. God is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy to be praised. God is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, he is worthy. Ooh, he is worthy to come on, he's worthy to be praised. He is, he is, come on, he's worthy to be praised. He is, he is, he is, he is. From the rising of the sun unto the setting of Come on, the Lord is worthy. He is the Lord is worthy. worthy. Come on, he's worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Come on, he's worthy to be praised. Come on, he's worthy. Come on, he's worthy. The Lord is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. My God is worthy. Come on, my God is worthy. My God is worthy. My God is worthy. He is worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the honor. And I bless his name. Come on, can you just bless his name? Because he is the savior of the world. We give him glory. 
Come on, we give him glory. There's nobody else worthy of all the glory. There's nobody else worthy of all the honor. We worship the true and only mighty, mighty God. The one and only true and mighty, mighty God sits up high and he looks down low he knows each and every last one of us he knows us he knows you he's an intentional God everything that has ever happened he knows about it thank you Jesus He's an amazing God. Listen, let's read Hebrews chapter 13 this morning. I'm still in the Amplified here. I want to read Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Here in the Amplified. And I'm going to, I'm going to start. I'm going to read all of chapter 13 because it's just 25 verses. And Hebrews 13 reads like this. It says, let love of your fellow believers continue. Do not neglect to extend hospitality to strangers especially among the family of believers. Remember, I have said oftentimes and many times how the body of Christ is more important than your blood family. Come on. The body of Christ is, 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 is more important. Why? Because that's your spiritual family. See, the first time you were born into sin, you were connected to your family. And then when you were born again, that makes you family in the family of the Most High God. So which one is more important? Well, well which one, which one is, it, it, is, it has everything to do with eternal life? That's the one that's most important. Haha. <laughs> That's the one that's most important, which is the family of God in Christ. So what does that mean, though? Actually, it's, it's a better position because the Lord knows what he's doing. Because when you put the, 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 the family of God first, what does that do? Well, it puts you in direct obedience to the first and second greatest commandment. Love the Lord God with all your mind, heart, soul, strength, heart, mind, soul, strength, right? And then love your neighbor as yourself. The only way you're able to do that is if you are in the family of Christ because the family of Christ loves everybody as their neighbor. You see how everything always adds, goes right back around to the greatest commandments? So he says, especially among the family of believers, that is where, that is, that is, that's, that's how you are. When you were like that in the world, when you were like, oh, that's my cousin, that's my auntie, that's my uncle. Now that's my cousin. I'm going to always ride for my cousin. I'm, that's my brother. That's my brother. I'm going to always, I'm going to always ride for my brother. I'm going to always ride for my sister. That's my sister. Now, ain't nothing happening to my sister. Well, the same way you said that about them, now that changes. <laughs> now that goes to the body of Christ. How can I help you? How can I help you? Do not neglect to extend hospitality to strangers. 
See, that right there all along, right there by itself, says love your neighbor as yourself. Do not neglect to extend hospitality to strangers, especially among the family of believers, being friendly, cordial, gracious, sharing the comforts of your home and doing your part generously. Well, I don't let everybody in my house. Everybody ain't. Well, you shall know them by their fruit. Are you looking at fruit or are you too busy looking at outer appearance? I'll know you by your fruit. I'll know you by what you say. I'll know you by what you do. You know, when you do something in, in, in somebody's sight, you have given them the opportunity and you have given them the right to judge according to what you're showing. That's why it's a difference when somebody says that's selfish versus you're selfish. Because you could say something in the moment that makes you sound selfish. But I would have to know you long enough to know that if you're a selfish person. But based on how you act after what you have said, it's going to tell me everything that I need to know. Now. My righteous judgment does not rule you out, but calls me to give you grace. <laughs> and maybe you can try again. For by this, some have entertained angels without knowing it. What is he saying? He's saying, be careful how you entertain strangers for you could be entertaining an angel underwear. Can I tell you that angels do not have wings? I don't know who told you that. I know I used to think that. A long, I used to think that. Some time ago, I used to think that angels had wings. Biblical angels do not have wings. The only thing that has wings in heaven are seraphim and cherubim. <laughs> angels don't have wings. Michael doesn't have wings. Gabriel don't have wings they're powerful beings that makes them even more powerful because they don't need any anything to be what God made them to be understand that Some of you might have encountered an angel before because if there were, if you've encountered an angel and you didn't see no wings, then you would think that there are no angels. But scripture tells you, be careful how you entertain strangers for you could have been entertaining an angel unaware. Sometimes the Lord uses angels The ones that you can see, ones that you can see and encounter to help you accomplish something that you couldn't do on your own when you needed his help. This is true. But he says, you got to be friendly cordial, gracious, gracious, sharing the comforts of your home and doing your part generously. For by this, some have entertained angels without knowing it. So you entertain uh, an, an angel without knowing it. If they had wings, you would know it. I know where the wings came from. The wings came from the European brothers and sisters. And it's not true. You don't read it in the Bible. You, you read figurative language of wings. But it talks about wings as eagles. 
They shall mount up with wings as eagles and soar. It's a metaphor. But you have to not neglect to extend hospitality to all people. As to what's safe, because that's what wisdom is. The Lord gives you wisdom to be able to do this without being ignorant. That's why you got to know them by your, that's why you got to be spiritual. Don't let nobody shame you for being spiritual. You can't be over spiritual, but you can be overzealous or overzealous. Those are two different things. Over spiritual just means because, see, when we say over spiritual, some people have given that a negative connotation and have given that a negative look. I can tell you half the people that lose their mind in church, jumping up and down, head going crazy, looking like a wild chicken. Those are those are the most unspiritual people. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Revelation. Come on, pay attention. Pay attention. Some of the people that be doing the most are the most, probably some of the, more than likely, some of the most unspiritual people. You out of breath. Everything you didn't did in that service, it don't translate out of service. Because <laughs> people only go to church because it's habitual. They're used to feeling like a victim. That's the reason why, that's the reason why when some messages are preached, it's a prosperity message or it's a message that coddles that victim mentality. And then they feel like the Lord is talking to them. And all alone, he's been saying repent for the last three years. Let me keep reading. <laughs> Jesus, let me keep reading. Remember those who are in prison, he says in verse three. As if you were their fellow prisoner and those who are mistreated, since you also are in the body and subject to physical suffering, marriage is to be held in honor among all. It's not saying that everybody is supposed to be married. He's saying that marriage is supposed to be honored by all people. What marriage, though? Holy marriage. The marriage that he sanctioned in Genesis. I want to spare you the details because you're not, you're not ignorant. We know what God said. We know what he created. That marriage is to be honored, is to be held in honor among all. Male, let me help you out. Male and female. That is regarded as something of great value. And the marriage bed undefiled. Oh my God, that, that, that's another nugget right there. There's another nugget right there. The marriage bed is undefiled. If it ain't male and female, it was defiled from the beginning. <laughs> Let me keep going. This is regarded as some, something of great value and the marriage bed undefiled by immorality or watch this, my God, or by any sexual sin.
TikTok about to ban me. Y'all better, y'all go, go follow, go follow the channel on YouTube because I feel it coming. It might not happen, but still, I feel it coming. <laughs> ah! TikTok going to hell in a handbag and its creators if they don't repent because everything is about money. And soon when the Lord returns, everybody's going to get a taste. For God will judge the sexual, immoral, and adulterous. God will judge the sexual, immoral, and adulterous. Let me say it again. God will judge. Let me go back. Let me go back. Marriage is held to be, marriage is to be held in honor among all between male and female that is regarded as something of great value and the marriage bed undefiled by immorality or any sexual sin for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Let your character, your moral essence, your inner nature be free from the love of money, shun greed, be financially ethical being content with what you have for he has said, I will never under any circumstances desert you nor give you up nor leave you without support, nor will I in any degree leave you helpless, nor will I forsake you or let you down or relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. So we take comfort and incur and are encouraged and confidently say the Lord is my helper in my time of need. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? What will man do to me? What will man do to me? Make some comments. Arrest me. Cause me pain. What? He won't leave you lonely. It says, I will never under any circumstances desert you nor give you up nor leave you without support, nor will I in any degree leave you helpless, nor will I forsake or let you down or relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. So we take comfort and, and, and are encouraged and confidently say the Lord is my helper in time of need. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? Sister Patrice, anybody like that? They're muted for the rest of the live. Not five minutes. No five minutes. They don't get five minutes. You don't get to talk stupid and come back in five minutes and say something else dumb. But you can listen. If you're muted, you know, you don't need to say anything, but you can be muted. You can come back. And if you come back tomorrow with the foolishness, you're blocked. Praise God. Remember your leaders. Hebrews 13, chapter, cha chapter 13, Hebrews 13, verse 7. Remember your leaders, for it was they who brought you the word of God and consider the result of their conduct, the outcome of their godly lives, and imitate their faith, their conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider of eternal salvation through Christ. And imitate their reliance on God with absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. Listen, it is for you, of course, to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But there should be some that you can look up to.
There were some of the old saints that knew how to pray, knew how to believe God, knew how to have faith, knew how to trust. But they're gone. They're gone now. There were a lot of pastors who could be looked up to. The ones that were teaching, the ones that were preaching. They were living it. They were living it. And this is what the writer of Hebrews is saying. He's saying, he's saying, remember your leaders for it was they who brought you the word of God. And there's some living now. There's some still, still now. But it seems as if it's all the snakes, all the wolves get the big platforms. And you got dumb sheep following them. Oh, I don't feel sorry for people who follow false, false teaching. I don't. I don't. Because many people call these, call folks out and they defend them. <laughs> they defend stupidity. And guess what? They got to pay for their faithfulness to unrighteousness. <laughs> it's amazing how somebody can be faithful to unrighteousness, but can't be faithful to the word. He says, remember your leaders for they are the ones that brought you the word of God and consider the result of their conduct, the outcome of their godly lives. Imitate their faith. Imitate their faith. Come on, can you drop that in the chat? Say, imitate their faith. Imitate it. Their conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things. Not just some things, all things. He created every single thing. The provider of eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. And watch this. He says, and imitate their reliance on God with absolute trust and confidence in his power. Imitate their faith and imitate their reliance on God. Why is he saying imitate their faith? Well, we know the definition of faith found in Hebrews two chapters over Hebrews 11. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not, uh, not seen. By it, the elders obtained a good report. The elders, the one that came before us, the Abrahams, the Enochs, the prophet Samuel. But even those that have brought us the word of God, within our lifetime. Imitate their faith. That means put actions to the things hope to the thing hoped for. What is the thing hoped for? Well, Jesus, he is our hope. He's the hope of glory. And if he's the hope of glory, that is where we put our faith. So our actions say, I'm following your footsteps. And each of the people that brought us the word of God should have been following the steps of Jesus. Imitate their faith and their reliance on God. What is the reliance? The reliance is the action. Reliance says dependence.
And the reason why I, be I, I, I believe that the writer of Hebrews says imitate their faith is because it's something that you can see. And they were walking, the ones that brought them the word of God were not walking like, like, some, of the, like, like some of these no good preachers and pastors today. Yeah, I said no good. I'll say it again. No good preachers and pastors today. It's not all of them. Not all of them. I wouldn't dare lump everybody in that, in that no good category. That's probably about 80% no good. And a good 20% that are still out there on the face of the earth. I'm not talking about just the U.S. I'm talking about everywhere. Probably just a good 20%, maybe less than that. But this writer is talking about men and women that brought the word of God. Brought the word of God. He said, if not, I don't even think that they would be worth mentioning. Hebrews wouldn't even, watch this, if there was none righteous, watch this, because people say, ain't none righteous. That's another misused statement, another misused scripture. It's not of our own righteousness. It's his righteousness through the Holy Ghost that lives in us. So we are righteous because he made us righteous. It's his righteousness. They'll take what, what Paul said in Romans. There is none righteous. He was talking about the ones that were living in sin, disobeying God in the beginning. In the Old Testament. But his spirit has made you righteous. So what are you saying? I'm saying the fact that Hebrew says this means that it's possible for people to live holy. It's possible for preachers to live holy. And be blameless, faultless. It's funny, everybody wants to be soy free, live a, a, a crazy, strict vegan life that says you can't eat this that and the other. Everybody wants to be dairy free. But don't nobody want to be sin free. <laughs> oh, sin belongs in the human diet. Let, let, let some people tell it. Let carnal people tell it. Let carnal Christians tell it. Sin's got to be in your diet. It's going to be in your diet somewhere. But it don't have to be. It don't have to be. Consider the result of their conduct, the outcome of their godly lives. There's an outcome to a godly life. There's an outcome to a godly life. And when you have faith, when you imitate their faith, there is a conviction. Why is there a conviction? Because it's, your conviction says that God exists, says that Yahweh exists and is the creator and ruler of all things. He sees all things. He knows all things. The provider of eternal salvation through Christ. And he says, imitate their reliance on God with absolute trust and confidence in his power. You imitate their reliance because obviously they were showing that they were totally dependent on Jehovah. 
They were confident and they trusted in his power, in his wisdom, in his goodness. Jesus Christ is eternally changeless always, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried away, verse 9, do not be carried away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be established and strengthened by grace and not by foods, rules of diet and ritualistic meals, which bring no benefit or spiritual growth to those who observe them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's so many people that put a lot of emphasis on fasting. Some of y'all about to unfollow me for what I'm about to say. But when you put more emphasis on fasting, you don't realize that you're putting more emphasis, you're putting faith in fasting and not in the reason for fasting. The purpose of fasting really is the mourning of the Savior being away. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Why you think you're fasting and it's not working? It's discipline. The more you push away the plate, the more you pull the spiritual plate to you, the word of God. So many people are, 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 are too busy trying to fast for items, for material things. The purpose of fasting is a memorial thing. It is for you to spend time. You have to pray. Scripture never tells you to fast without ceasing. Uh-oh. Where does it say that? Does it say fast without ceasing? No. It says rejoice always. Give thanks in all circumstances. And pray without ceasing. I'm not saying don't fast. I'm saying don't put your faith in fasting. Put your faith in Jesus. Because fasting can become your idol. Why do you think fasting has to be accompanied by prayer? Because it's not about the fast. It's about the spirit. Your communication with heaven. Forget your stomach. You got to forget your stomach anyway, walking in the spirit. Because your stomach is symbolic for your flesh. And your stomach has a hard time resisting what it says it needs. But can you push past what the flesh wants and give in to the spirit? This is what it means when it says their reliance on God with absolute trust, confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. 
Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He says this. I got to go back to this. Do not be carried away by diverse and strange teachings. There are too many people being carried away by diverse and strange teaching. Don't believe me? Scroll TikTok right now. You can come back to, come, come, come to us, come be with us on YouTube and get on your phone. Be with us on YouTube. Leave for a second. Go to TikTok right now and scroll. See how much dumb stuff you hear with the name of Jesus in it. Teaching things that are not scripture, teaching things that are not Bible, teaching things that Jesus did not say. And if he said it, 99.9% .9 of the time they're misquoting it and they're misusing it and they're misinterpreting it and misinterpreting. There's nothing difficult about this. There's nothing hard about this understanding. There is nothing tough about this kind of living. And when it is tough, it's only tough because your stomach. What does your flesh smell? That's what I want you to understand. You know when you tried to fast before, when you fasted before? and you're smelling something, but it's something that you know you're not supposed to eat at that time. You're not supposed to eat in that moment. But the smell of, it's drawing you. Can I tell you, the same way it is when it comes to fasting. In the natural, when you're fasting and you're praying, but when you're fasting, it's the same way in the spiritual and with the flesh. There are things that are going to be attractive. But your prayer life is going to determine how strong you are. Your walk with him and your belief and your trust and your confidence and your reliance on him is going to determine how you can be successful at staying away. The less you pray, the weaker you are. It's like Hancock. You know that Will Smith movie with Charlize Theron? He was super strong. He had a whole lot of strength. He would squeeze things and it would break. He, could, he couldn't really land without breaking up the ground. But watch this. Charlene, Ther Charlene Ther uh, Theron's character was just like him. But she's married now. In the movie. And Hancock gets close to her husband. And her husband likes Hancock. So he invites him over to the crib so they can, you know, have dinner. And then he sees, he meets her. He does, Will Smith's character doesn't remember her, but she remembers him. Now, him getting closer to her. is sin. Why? Because she's married now. Not only that, the closer he gets to her, the weaker he gets in power. <laughs> so I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to paint this picture for you. You, you might not have seen the movie Hancock, but go see it with this in mind. Go look at it with, with this, with this understanding in mind. That the closer you get to things that don't belong to you, the closer that you get to things that, 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 that you have left, going back to it makes you weak. Hancock was able to be shot. Bull there were bullets. He would get shot. People would shoot at him and they would bounce off like BBs. But the moment he got close to the female version of his kind, he got weak. And now when he was shot, it, he was, it, it, was, it was going through his flesh. Now he needs to be hospitalized. Now he's becoming more and more human. 
because he got too close to what he wasn't supposed to be near. You have to rely on God. Do not be carried away by diverse, strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be established and strengthened by grace and not by foods, uh, 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 rules of diet and ritualistic meals, which bring no benefit or spiritual growth to those who observe them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle, sacred tent, have no right to eat. Verse 11, for the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest as an offering for sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore, Jesus also suffered and died outside the city gate so that he might sanctify and set apart for God as holy the people who believe through the shedding of his own blood. So let us go out to him outside the camp, bearing his contempt, the disgrace and shame that he had to suffer. For here we have no lasting city, but we are seeking the city which is to come, which is new Jerusalem. Verse 15, he says, through him, therefore, let us all time, let us at all times offer up God a sacrifice of praise. See, people, a lot of people would like to preach this. They would preach this or take this uh, one, one piece of verse. And they always quote this. You'll always hear this in almost every church, them, them churches that love to shout all the time. I, I'm not against shouting. I'm not against praise breaks, but I'm against the one. I'm against the ones that do it all the time. And, and, and especially when people are still bound, they don't be free. They don't be none of that, but they still be shouting. Shouting means nothing if your praise isn't wrapped inside of your worship. <laughs> Oh, everybody can praise. Scripture says, let everything that has breath, even the atheist, praise God. They don't even know it. Just through their, they're praising God. They're praising God. Don't even know it. Through their unbelief, through their scientific experiments they're praising him you know because if you don't want to praise him then you would just be quiet and not try to figure out who he is just say he's not real and move on but no you have an opinion the fact that you have an opinion about the unknown god to you simply says that he exists and it simply says that you're giving him praise did you know you praise somebody that you talk about because You've given the, they got your attention. Even when the foolish people come into the live and they say whatever it is they're going to say, you're proving my God to be true. You're proving it right. But everybody can praise God, but everybody can't worship. So how can you really offer up a sacrifice of praise? Well, praise has to come from a place of worship. Why? Real praise, true praise in the praise that he's talking about here in Hebrews. Through him, therefore, let us through him, therefore, let us at all times offer up to God, a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name. That's the difference. So you don't have to go to church to praise. Beyonce don't have to go to church to praise. Jay-Z, Kanye. 
Every person in the wicked music industry, even some of your wicked gospel artists, is still a praise. But it's not a worship praise. I believe that there's a difference. Based on the text, through him, who? Through Jesus, therefore, because it's got to be through Jesus. Through Jesus, therefore, let us at all times. See, they don't do it at all times. That's the difference between praises. B between praise that is just a praise from creation because he created them versus a praise that comes from those that worship him because worship is a lifestyle. Worship is a behavior. Worship is what we do daily. That's a sacrifice by itself. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. That is your only way of worship. That is your reasonable service. So, because I'm locked into worship, when I praise, it's coming out of my worship because I am in through him. We only got in through Jesus. Therefore, let us at all times offer up to God, to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name. Do not neglect. Watch this. Here's verse 16 that follows up with that praise that's inside of that worship. Watch this. He says, do not neglect to do good to contribute to the needy of the church as an expression of fellowship. But if you go to Bedside Baptist, you don't have no fellowship. You do need fellowship with the brethren. Brethren means brothers and sisters. You need the fellowship. You will lose your mind by yourself. It's one thing to have to cope if you're in if if you're if you're in in, in prison and you're thrown into solitary confinement. Now you have no choice. But why do you put yourself in solitary confinement and you're not in prison? Oh, I'm sorry. No. You are in prison. Imprisoned in your mind and in your soul and in your spirit. Stuck under the illusion that you have freedom in the spirit when you don't have the ability or the capacity to truly do what his word says. Do not neglect to do good, to contribute to the needy of the church as an expression of fellowship for such sacrifices are always pleasing to God. They're always pleasing to God. I've got to hurry up. We've got to pray. I'm going to go into verse 17. It says, obey your spiritual leaders. Obey your leaders. Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, recognizing their authority over you, for they are keeping watch over your souls and continually guarding your spiritual welfare as those who will give an account of their stewardship, a stewardship of you. This is why. You're responsible for yourself, but this is why you need to watch what church you go to and who you call your pastor. Because watch this, I, I couldn't, it would be hard for me to obey or listen to a spiritual leader and submit to them, recognizing, just in recognizing the authority over me 
to know that they are watching over my soul and continually guarding uh, your spiritual welfare as those who will give an account. See, it'd be hard for me to do that if I don't imitate their faith. And if their faith that I'm imitating doesn't give the, the, the outcome of a godly life. I'm not imitating nobody that does not have faith. I've had my father as my, my earthly father in my life as my as as what to imitate in his faith because the man got faith. That's who I've seen. My grandmother had faith. Couldn't see very well. Had real bad issues seeing she was considered legally blind. But the woman could still cook. I didn't understand it. Walk up and down stairs. Every morning. Could feel her way around a telephone. Without dialing the wrong number. Memory was amazing. It was by faith. And all the time, she was believing God for her sight to get better. But what she didn't really realize was the fact that she was able to get around and still move in her house without help because she was still walking by faith and not by sight. This is why you got to have people in your life. I want you to examine your pastors. Wherever you go to church, look at their social media. Because in the, pul the pulpit is not enough. What is your life like out of the pulpit? And we can kind of know what your life is like based on how you preach and how much power comes from your preaching because your preaching is only as powerful as the life that you're living. You got to be able, listen, you got to be so spiritual that regardless of how good a preacher puts together a homiletical outline, and is able to break down three points and give you a sermon that that where it sounds like he's giving he he's giving he's giving uh uh, uh his his in his uh thesis whatever it is that they require of you when you're getting a doctorate they can get up there every Sunday and sound great but be the biggest weed smokers drunk cigar whore calling preachers. And you will be fooled. That's my past. All these feminine pastors coming out of the woodworks. Hand twitching. They run with snakes. So I don't have a preaching circle. I don't have a preacher circle. I know preachers. But I don't ever get too close. I don't get too close because I don't want to become a partaker of your sin. Or of the things that lead to sin. That is the only place, my brothers and sisters, where you have permission, permission to be selfish 
is when it comes to your salvation. That is the only place. That's the only place. Everybody wants to go into a burning house and they want you to go with them. But don't worry about it, girl. We got a mask, bro. We got a mask, bro. We got a mask. Come on, let's go, bro. I'm good. Everybody, everybody's making that decision to go one by one on their own. So, a spiritual leader has to be somebody I can listen to. Don't be fake. Don't be fake. And this is what he's saying again. Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, recognizing that they're not your God. They don't tell you what to do. But they are watchmen that sit on a tower that are supposed to be spiritual. Judging things spiritually. As the Lord will give them what to say. This is why a pastor must know the temperature of the congregation. That's why he's teaching the congregation and not preaching to the congregation. These two are different. We preach to the world the gospel. And after those that receive the gospel, those that are saved, we teach them on how to remain. Living a life that is inside of the gospel. Now, how many times oh, different different writer different writers in in, in scripture uh, of these letters say avoid false teaching. Avoid it. These strange teachings. They're not doing nothing for you but taking you to hell. Along with them that teach these things that they know are not true. Most of them know it. Most of them refuse to get it right. You know why that's taking them to hell? Because their pride won't allow them to be corrected. We just read it in chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 7 of Hebrews, you must submit to correction for the purpose of discipline. God is dealing with you as with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? Now, if you are exempt from correction and without discipline, in which of all of God's children share, then you are illegitimate children and are not sons at all. If I've ever taught something that was not correct or something that was incorrect, it is my responsibility to correct it. Forget pride. Forget, oh, they're going to think I'm not. Forget that. That's what says who you, that's what says who you belong to when you're willing to do those things. But a lot of these people are not doing it. 
a lot of these people are not doing it and they're not going to. But you can't obey spiritual leaders who are not spiritual. You can't let these people have rule over you. And quite naturally, most people don't even listen anyway. If you listen, thank you, Jesus. If you listen and you're prayerful in your listening to your pastor and in your actions that you're taking and what they're saying, you will know if they're not spiritual or not. Because first of all, anything that anybody tells you, any pastor tells you, should be based on scripture. This is why there's so many people doing dumb things and being abused in churches because they don't read themselves. <laughs> Women sexually abused by these pastors. Because they don't know the word. They won't live in the spirit. And the pastors speaking, those particular pastors are speaking straight from the flesh, trying to be spiritual. And they are being spiritual. They're being spiritually wicked. And the devil is using them. And they want to be used by them because of the purpose and why they're saying what they're saying. Manipulation. You know, it's even more evil when you it's 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 just pure evil in general, but it's. To me, it's it's even more wicked and even more wicked when you uh, when you put the name of the Lord in it. Watch your pastors. Watch the lifestyle. Watch the character. I know it's such a strong term when it says obey your spiritual leaders. It's saying listen. Listen. Submit. It's no different than listening and submitting to a supervisor on your job. Submitting to the boss on the job. It's no different. But this, on this side, when it comes to church, this is spiritual. He's a spiritual manager, a spiritual supervisor you're not a slave but we're all servants we're all servants because guess what However they lead you, they are going to have to give an account of their stewardship of you. Imagine all those people, all those preachers who got to answer to God 
for all the women that they slept with in their con a congregation? They got an answer for that. They got an answer for the manipulation. They got an answer for it. The reason why he says, listen, he goes on to say this in, in, in within that verse. Let them do this with joy and not with grief and groans, for this would be of no benefit of you. What does that mean? It means when you make a pastor's job tough, take away from their ability to deliver. A word. They can deliver it. But they won't be able to do the things that the Lord has charged them to do. Carry out becomes difficult. Now it's still their responsibility to do their job as, as a preacher, which is to study, to show that self approved. We all have that responsibility. But when the way gets tough and the people make it tough, you don't listen. It's like, okay, what do you, what else do you do? I've experienced this. Even in being online. <laughs> being in person. But it's no benefit to anybody. Because nobody's getting nothing out of it. Then he says, keep praying for us. For we are convinced that we have a good conscience seeking to conduct ourselves honorably. That is with moral courage and personal integrity in all things. And I urge all of you to pray earnestly so that I may be restored to you soon. Who is this talking? This is an unknown author. Some say it's Paul. Some think it could have been Apollos. But whomever it is, they're speaking from experience. And in the benediction here, it says, now may the God of peace, the source of serenity and spiritual well-being who brought up from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood that sealed and ratified the eternal covenant, equip you with every good thing to carry out his will and strengthen you, making you complete and perfect as you ought to be. Accomplishing in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The rest is the uh, is benediction from verse 22 through 25, but I won't read that. I spent long enough on verses 1 through 21. I've read Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 through 21. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, doers of his most holy word. Let us offer up a word of prayer. I pray that you got something out of that. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that you got something out of that because, you know, a lot of these scriptures, these letters get overlooked. They get overlooked because it doesn't seem like they benefit you any. 
but they do. They do. This is for New Testament Christians, and that's who we are. Saved by grace through faith. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you that you always speak to us. We thank you that you always continue to move upon us. We that have ears to hear, we listen to make changes and to take heed to what you say. Lord, we honor you today because you are the sovereign God. You are the great I am. You're the Prince of Peace. You're the Rose of Sharon. You're the lily in the valley. You're the bright and morning star. We worship you and we come to you to confess and let you know that we know that we're nothing without you and we can't make it without you. We need you every step of the way. We need you to continue to fuel us because we can't fuel ourselves. And when we do, we always fall away. And so you're the vine. and We're the branches. And we just want to stay abiding in you. In the name of Jesus. For we trust you. And we believe you. Lord, we want our faith to be in a place where those that are coming to know you can see our faith and imitate our faith and our reliance on you. Because we believe and we trust in your wisdom, in all of your power, for you are the almighty God. Touch each and every person under the sound of my voice. As we could always use more of your strength, we could always use more peace as we seek peace and pursue it can always use more of you because you are the source of everything that we need. We run to you, our helper, for you promise to never leave us nor forsake us. And so we're staying right here. We're staying right here in your presence. And we're not going anywhere. And we will make sure that we won't fail to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. For you deserve it all in the mighty name of Jesus. You deserve it all. You deserve everything that we could give you. And so we give you our minds, our souls, our hearts, our spirit. We give you everything that belongs to you, Heavenly Father. For you have forgiven us. You've washed us clean. You've made us whole. We can believe you and trust you without being weary in well-doing. But we know that in due season, we will reap it if we do not give up, if we do not faint. So, Father, as you're touching even now, go into someone's room who is not feeling well. I pray and ask that you would touch their bodies in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would heal them, touch them from the crown of their heads down to the soles of their feet, Lord, whatever that they were believing in and trusting in that is not like you. Lord, they cast it down. We cast it down now in the name of Jesus. But we believe you and we trust you. There is nobody that can do what you do. There is nobody that can say what you say for you are alpha and omega. You're the beginning and the end. You have no 
beginning. You are self-existent and all-knowing. And we're trusting you. Our hope and our confidence is in nobody but you. We're leaning to you, the author and the perfecter, the finisher of our faith. We increase our faith today. We increase our faith today. And we're saying to the mountain, be removed. Be removed. And it is obeying us in the name of Jesus. There is no situation too big. No situation too small that you cannot handle. You are an amazing God. And we're holding fast to your unchanging hand. We're holding fast to your unchanging word. For Lord Jesus, you're the same today, yesterday, and forever. You do not change. You do not shift. You are the same God. And we're believing you. We're constantly believing in you. We're constantly depending on you. Our reliance is in nobody but you, for there is no other God. There is no other great I am. You are the only I am. You are the God of Israel. You're the God of the Bible. You are so amazing. And we put our trust in you. Our confidence is in you. Our help is in you. Lord, I pray that you give each and every person strength. Give each and every person productivity in the name of Jesus to complete the things that you have put in their minds and in their hearts to do. Lord, let your spirit continue to bring about a change. Let your spirit continue to bring about hope that is in you. We do not concern ourselves with the things of this world, for it is all fleeting and it is passing away. We concern ourselves and put our treasures in things above and not things on the earth but down here is where the thief can break in and where the moth can eat up but there is no thief that is power powerful enough to steal something that you have given because we have access to you in one spirit. We thank you for access to you, Father. For none can come to you except that we go through Jesus first. We thank you for the blood that you shed on Calvary's cross. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for starting us on our way. We thank you for the lives of our children. We thank you for the lives of our wives and husbands and family. Lord, we thank you even for our family in Christ. We thank you that there is more strength and more power in our family in Christ than there is in our blood family. Strengthen the body. Strengthen your body. Strengthen your body. As your spirit gives understanding, because your word says, he that is spiritual judges all things. Lord, let your people be able to see the truth. For there are many false prophets you said that would rise and would come. That was even in your time, Lord Jesus, when you walked the earth. But even now, as you have ascended into the heavens and await the time 
that the Father gives for you to return. There are even false prophets today. Open the eyes and open the ears as we get closer to you. As we continue to worship you, as we continue to rely on you, we go deeper, firmly rooted in our faith in you. In the name of Jesus. But we trust you. We trust you. And nobody else. We put nothing before you, Heavenly Father. We give you our life and our strength. Everything that is within us blesses your name. Touch each and every person. Under the sound of my voice, touch them on their job. Touch the people at their jobs. Lord, use those that are listening right now to be witnesses. To be able to testify how good you are. In the name of Jesus. But we know that you can and there is nothing hard for you. There is nothing that you cannot do because you are the God of the impossible. You've proved yourself time after time, even when you don't have to prove yourself, you don't have to give us anything. For you exist beyond any human's belief. You exist and we believe you. So continue to grant us favor in the name of Jesus, according to your will. Lord, we don't pray that our will be done. We pray your will be done. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory and we give you honor. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, can you just give God some praise? Give him praise that comes from your worship. Give him praise that comes from your worship. Come on, give him praise that comes from your worship in the name of Jesus come on come on come on come on we worship you we honor you God Yahweh Adonai El Shaddai Elohim we worship you 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 in the beauty of holiness we give you glory we give you praise we give you honor we give you honor there is nobody like you there is nobody like you Nobody, nowhere. We honor you, God. We honor you, God. We honor you, God. We lift you up. We lift you up. Hey, we lift you up. 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 In the name of Jesus, keep your head up. Only believe. Only believe. Come on, only believe. Come on, only, only, only. Only believe, only believe, only believe, only believe. You got to only believe, only believe. Come on, only, only believe. No room for doubting. Come on, no room for doubting. Only believe. Come on, can you drop that in the chat, each and every person, if you can, if you can type right now, can you just type it in the chat? Only believe, only believe, only, only believe. To only believe means that there is nothing else beside it. There is nothing that comes behind it or comes before it because it is only. Only believe. You cannot doubt. You cannot doubt. Only believe in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And the will of God shall be done in your life. And the will of God shall be done in your life. Only believe, only believe, 
Only believe. Only believe. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Glory to the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory to his name. Make sure you're believing. Make sure you're believing. Make sure you're believing. In the spaces that you have control over, you have to limit the unbelief that is around you. What do you mean? You got to stop spending a lot of time with people who don't believe. Thank you, Jesus. Only believe. Nobody else can save you but Jesus. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus. Be the wheat, not the tear. Be the wheat, not the weeds. Because in the end, the weeds are going to be thrown into the fire. Thank you, Jesus. Only believe. No room to doubt whatsoever. I can't tell you when your situation is going to change. Not every, can I be honest with you? Not everybody's situation is going to change at the same time. But at some point, the situation is going to change. And here's why you don't need to know when. Because you need to know how to trust God through good and bad. You can't just trust him when you feel like it. You can't just trust him when it looks like you're getting ready to get something or achieve something that you want to do or you want to get. You got to believe him through the tough time. You have to trust him through the tough time. You have to always have faith. Your faith should always be pushing you forward in Jesus. I pray your faith does not fail you. I pray your faith does not fail you. And it's all in you taking action. It's on you. It's on you. So listen, God bless you today. I pray that today be a blessed Tuesday for you and that you continue to trust him all the way. That you continue to trust him all the way. Keep the faith and only believe. Listen, I pray that I'll see you tomorrow morning at, at the same hour, 6.15 a.m. Central Standard Time. And the mic 
be here earlier depending on um, when I'm back in the house. But I want you to keep your head up. Keep looking at the Lord. Keep the faith. Faith without action is dead. What is the action? Well, believing. Faith is the action of things hoped for. Faith is the movement. Faith is my belief, my believing. All right? So have, again, have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. Today's going to be a good day. Today is going to be a blessed day. And you're going to be blessed today. This is why you got to, this is why you got to pray every, pray every day. Pray every day. I'm not. I'm not trying to convince you to show up here every day, but if, if if you don't, even if you don't connect here, pray. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. I'm just gonna start randomly. Come, uh, prayer uh, in the afternoon, different days of the week, uh, but we're always here in the morning, Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, 6:15 a.m. Central Standard Time. And if you're on the East East Coast, that is 7.15 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. And if you're on the West Coast, that is 4.15 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Again, I hope to see you uh, in the morning. I love you. And there's absolutely not one thing you can do about it. Peace. Make sure you hit that like button on your way out. Those of you that are watching on, on, on YouTube, hit the like button so so many other people can come across this live this morning.